using the cover name Bishop. Oh, don't confuse anybody with yeah. facts. Don't confuse them with facts. All right, welcome in. It is Saturday session, 970 WMAY. The News and Talk of Springfield. We are live November 12th, 2011, and I am joined in studio by a couple of members from Occupy Springfield, Chris and Anthony. Gentlemen, welcome in. How are we doing this evening? Good, good. Yeah. Good to be here. All right, and I want, I want you both to just start by telling me how you got involved with this group, and we'll start with uh, with Chris. Uh. I heard about it. I think my wife actually stumbled on it on uh, Facebook when looking up other occupancy things, Occupy Wall Street and so forth. Uh, we heard about the local movement. Uh, I heard about the General Assembly meetings and the uh, participatory democracy that they have. Um, so we decided to go on down in front of the Chase Bank on 6th Street and hang out, see what it was like. and. Loved it from the start. I mean, these are people with the same grievances that I've had for quite a while. And so I think we stepped right into it. And Anthony, for you? Yeah, same as me. I, I uh, you know, first saw it on the, the national media. And uh, I found that some of the things they were talking about kind of piqued my interest. And I agreed with the uh, ultimately what they were getting at. And so I decided to uh, find out if there was a local Occupy movement, and indeed there was. And uh, so I decided to go to a general assembly and see what it was all about. Now, this uh, Occupy uh, movement, and I, I covered it when it first started because, of course, it started September 17th. And I was watching some of the live feeds and um, just, just watching it all unfold. And I thought to myself, well, is the media going to pick this up? And in my studies for communication, I'm working on my master's, and my thesis is actually going to focus on the Occupy movement and how the media is portraying them, both the mainstream media and the alternative media. One thing I found so far in looking at, uh, and I'm only going to be looking at a month's worth of media coverage from when it started September 17th to, I think, October 15th when it was the global day of, uh, of uh, protest. So what I found was the first three weeks, the mainstream media mocked it, gave it very little coverage, would only talk about the numbers of people involved, never the message, while the alternative media was really focusing on the message and uh, how they were being chastised by the media. But three weeks into it was when we had, what, 700 people arrested on Brooklyn Bridge in New York? That was the turning point for the mainstream media. Yeah. It seemed that mass arrests and any kind of violence is what the mainstream media turned around and started reporting on it. And it's only been constant reporting since then. And since then, we've seen all of this craziness in Oakland going on with the police there, clashing with protesters up into Portland, you know, eviction notices from the mayor up there. I mean, there are so many stories across the country and around the world about the Occupy movement. But one thing uh, that hasn't necessarily been made clear enough is the message. And you both have talked about, you know, this this – concept that you seem to have agreed with. And I want to know, what are some of those particulars that you guys do agree with, uh, with not just the National Occupy group, but also with you know the local Occupy Springfield, Illinois group? Mm -hmm. I, one of the things I noticed right off the top was that they were purposely ambiguous with their message. And I think that is unique. And uh, unfortunately, that's hard to put into a soundbite for the media. They like to have a small short seven second statement or right. a, a rally cry or a chant and um that's actually what piqued my interest is that you know the ambiguity of the movement is actually why it's so strong um there's not just one demand uh, the you know you're not going to find a specific list of things to check off um, because every movement is unique and in, in, in and of itself because you know different issues affect different parts of our country in different ways uh, poverty is going to affect inner cities much more than it's going to affect rural environments not to say that there's not, you know, people who struggle in the rural areas, but each one's going to be a little bit different. Um, and, you know, I noticed that right off the top that they actually are very clever about uh, letting everyone craft their own message. And I think that's super important um, because— And you're talking about the various groups The various groups, the right. Okay. Um, you know, I think that one of the arguments is, is that, uh, you know— the one demand they have is is basically for change, you know, and um, is changed by the people as opposed to being told what we're supposed to like. And having them actually design their own change gets their buy-in. And so that's going to build the numbers. And that's why you've seen the numbers just skyrocket from, from when it first got there. Um, but if the powers that be respond with absolutely nothing, then we know that it's uh, never going to be, that, the, you know, they're never interested in affecting substantial change nationwide and that, you know, 
the whole purpose of this is that this is our government, and that is kind of the abstract that's going to come out of the whole movement. So it's definitely a people's power uh, type of movement. The focus is we are the taxpayers. Right. We are the ones that uh, have the ultimate voice, and we're not seeing that play out in Washington. Yeah, so if, if you wanted to build a house— you know, you're you're going to hire someone who's who's qualified to do that, but at the same time, you're not going to let them tell you how many bedrooms you need right. or what size your garage should be. Sure. You're going to tell them what you want, and their job is to design it to your specifications, right. and that's how our government should work. I completely agree with that notion. And Chris, for you, what what in particular uh, about the movement? Because we heard from Anthony saying it was more or less you know the ambiguity of it. Uh, and the ability to craft our own message locally for the Occupy Springfield group. What, what in your opinion, uh, really drew you in uh, to say, you know what, this is the movement I'm going to get behind? Uh, I think uh, the way people come together, especially in the Occupy, and even nationwide, um, like he spoke of the ambiguity, the, the idea is that we all are angry. Some people don't really know why they're angry, but they, they know and they feel and they sense that something is wrong and that somebody has to stand up for it. When we come together, we know, uh, I would say, in my mind, our main grievance is probably the corporatism in America, the the corporate elements with influence over our government. Um, so for that to happen, we can all easily come together and be upset by that and decide to move together to stand against that. Um, you have individuals who have their own individual platforms um, some of us can be very leftist. Some of us are conservatives. Some of us believe voting is where change can happen. Some of us do not. Um, you have a mix of people, but we're all there no matter what our personal politics. We understand that we can focus on the one message that we do all agree on and push for change that in that manner. What exactly is that message? Because a lot of people listening in might not have any idea what the message is. They've heard everything from, you know, animal cruelty to student loans to greed is bad. Uh, I think the greed is bad is probably the best angle. Um, and we don't all stand together against the, about student loans and different things like that. Um, but we do, we come together, we see a government where you hear congressmen talk about their constituents, yep. their constituents. Who are their constituents? To us, the way we see it and the way reality plays out lately, their constituents are large corporations who donate to their, you know, for them, hopefully, lifelong campaigns to stay in government. It's not the people. It's not the people, the, the guy working 40 or 60 hours a week you know, the unemployed, it's not those people anymore. And it, it needs to be brought back to focus. If, if we have a government of the people by the people, it should be that. Yeah, and we do see too often uh, big-time lobbyists getting first, you know, face-to-face -face time with congressmen, with senators, and they pretty much write the laws that give the major corporations uh, you know, first dibs on whatever, or even lax regulations for large right. corporations, and the small mom and pop place down the street is stuck with having to follow all of these hardcore reg regulations, hiring lawyers, right. uh, tax attorneys, and so on to ensure that they can, well, keep more of the money that they earn, uh, while the big corporations like CME or uh, Sears, for instance, here in Illinois. Uh, they're lobbying to have huge tax breaks, which ultimately is going to cost the state of Illinois, Illinois, upwards of like four hundred million dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, and, and I think people do understand that sentiment, and they they are behind that. And I want to talk a little bit more about um, what took place on uh, Wednesday. Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Wednesday down at the Capitol building at the Rotunda. I was there. We reported on it, uh, and about forty five people or so were there with the Occupy Springfield group. Uh, and we'll talk about that coming up next. What was the message? Uh, what transpired? Uh, and, of course, your phone calls with uh, Chris and Anthony from Occupy Springfield right here with Saturday Session on 970 WMAY, the News and Talk of Springfield. By the way, uh, the website for Occupy Springfield is OccupySpringfieldIL.org. OccupySpringfieldIL.org. You can also find them on Facebook, so go check it out. 970 WMAY. 
All right, welcome back. Saturday session, 970 WMAY. The news and talk of Springfield. The phone number live into the studio, 217-629-7970. You can also email me, Greg Bishop, your host. You can email bishop at WMAY.com. In the studio with me, we've got Anthony and Chris from Occupy Springfield. Of course, the website is OccupySpringfieldIL.org. You guys had a uh, demonstration, uh, an occupation. I don't, what, what do you want to call that? What was that at the Capitol building on an, Wednesday? An action. It was an action, so like a demonstration of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to play a little bit of a clip here of um, of the actual audio that I was able to grab because I was there uh, reporting on it. And this is what it's uh, what it started off with. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. We are. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. We are Occupy Springfield. We are Occupy Springfield. We are the 99 percent. We are the 99 percent. We will be heard. We will be heard. Vote no on SB 397. Vote no. Lawmakers in Springfield. Lawmakers in Springfield. Take it up. Should be fighting tax breaks. For greedy corporations. Not breaking promises. And uh, for people who are probably having trouble listening to what's going on there, um, it started with one person with the, the chant, all right, and people right. were repeating it. Uh, the people's mic, as it were. Yeah. And then you can hear uh, throughout the audio, and people can find this audio. It's posted at their Facebook page, Occupy SPI. Just search Facebook for that, and you'll find it. But you can you can hear throughout that audio police going up to one person saying, you've got to go, take this outside. And then somebody else picks up on the chant and leads it. Everybody else repeats. Then the police go and grab that person, take them out. So you guys essentially got escorted out of the building one by one. Right. Now, what was the reason that you were given? Uh, well, you know, the uh, we didn't have a permit is the reason we were given. Um, but the um, it's a new way of doing things. I'll, I'll admit that, and it's a, it's a bit, you know, uh, a lot unconventional. Of, unconventional, yeah. yeah. And so when we call it a press conference, mm-hmm. which is how we do our press conferences, sure, um, they didn't say that it conformed to the normal way a press conference was done. Right. And so um, so they said that it was a protest and not a press conference, and therefore we didn't have a permit. However, we wouldn't have been given a permit because the uh, the a certain rate a certain station or certain agency uh, had been given a permit to occupy that space, the Capitol Rotunda, for the entirety of the veto session. Mm-hmm. So while our lawmakers were up listening to lobbyists and uh, people who were interested, the real everyday people that are not lobbyists and don't have they're not millionaires and and can afford attorneys to go and speak for them. Would not don't did not have an opportunity to express their views on it, right. uh, and so no one was allowed into the rotunda during the entire veto session. Meanwhile, they're talking about you know tax breaks for for uh, for large corporations. And let's um, focus on that because a yeah, lot of the news sure. was um, and we reported on why you guys were there mm-hmm. with you know the, the the bottom part of the story being you guys were escorted out of the building peacefully for not having a permit. Sure. But at least we you know here at WMAY we talked about. Why you guys were there, and of course you were standing up against SB 397. That's right. Which would have given exorbitant tax breaks to CME and also uh, Sears and any other major corporation that probably wanted to knock on the state's door and say, sure. you know what, we're going to leave the state uh, because of the hefty income tax that you guys imposed on us. Meanwhile, you know, a place down the street, a sub shop, or uh, you know, a, a car detail place, even you know, it, it doesn't matter what the, what the, the what the company is, they have to pay these exorbitant taxes. While right. the big companies that you know do provide jobs and whatnot, uh, they get by without the tax break. So that's why you guys were there. That's right. Opposing this particular bill, which almost seems like the pinnacle of what the movement in general is opposing. You're right. Yeah, it's corporate greed, pure and simple. So you guys got escorted out. Um, without a permit and you know the police were very polite and they they let sure. it be known that you know they're doing their job and and the bizarre activity of them taking down some of the people's names and driver's licenses uh With just one person oh just one person yeah. just jordan because he started it he was oh, the one that interested that it initiated it okay uh yeah and i was told that uh that was because they wanted to ensure that if jordan wanted to turn around and press charges or anything like that then 
they would know who it was, who they at least um, uh, took outside. So it was just a, it really was a fascinating um, spectacle mm-hmm. uh, to watch that unfold, especially with uh, the bright lights from this other organization that right. did have a permit. You know, they essentially had a mini studio set up yeah, in the Capitol right. Rotunda. And that nixed any other organization's ability to get a permit, apparently. That's right. uh, so w- I want to talk now about the, the future uh, demonstrations that you guys have planned. Uh, we got to take a quick break for news here in a moment. But uh, you guys have um, a potluck coming up, mm-hmm. um, right. which is, when is that exactly? Well, we have, if I can just do a quick rundown of what sure. we currently have. Tonight, we're having a potluck. Okay. It actually started at 6. It's oh, at great. the old state Capitol Plaza. Okay. Anybody interested in talking with us, whether you agree or not, come yep. on down. Have some food and conversation. Uh we're also, it's not an action, but we're going to start going to city council meetings. Bravo. Get, I'll you know, see you there. <laughs> we need to get involved in local politics. I'm there every flipping Tuesday, there and I tell you what, it is, it's a wonderful thing. The it Springfield is. City it Council. Is, yeah. Watching it unfold. I don't know if you guys listen to the council roundup, uh, mm-hmm. but for people who aren't able to tune in, Ray Lytle and I, every Wednesday morning, we break it down uh, yeah. as long as it takes to go through all the little quirks, talk about some of the major issues and... It's political theater at its best. It is. Uh, but it's also something that people need to start doing. You're more. right. You they know, should, as, as yeah. l- that's as local as it gets. It is. And all the things they do impact you on a daily basis. Absolutely. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things you guys have planned. Of course, it's not just one rally and you're done for six months. No, no. This is an ongoing thing, and I want to talk more about it. And I also want to get uh, listeners to call in. If you've got questions, if you've got concerns, if you are a critic of the Occupy movement. Now is the time to air your concerns with a couple of representatives from the Occupy Springfield group. The phone number live into the studio, 217-629-7970. That's 217-629-7970. We'll be right back. This is segment nine. Welcome back. It is Saturday Session 970 WMAY, the News and Talk Springfield. You know, one thing that happens with talk radio all the time, the conversation off the air is always much more intense than the conversation on the air. I don't know why that is. Uh, But maybe we'll try to touch on some of those issues we talked about off the air. Uh, But I wanted to first uh, jump into some of the uh, future demonstrations, future actions that you guys have. And, Chris, you mentioned that uh, going on right now, down at the uh, uh, old Capitol Plaza is a potluck. Yep. And tell me again a little bit more about that. Uh, it's really community outreach. Um, we are definitely getting into a stance and having ideas to say, uh, what is Occupy? Who are you? Why are you people here? We want people to ask those questions because there are far too many assumptions. Uh, you know, even certain local radio talent has their assumptions and has never bothered to come and ask us directly mm-hmm. what it is we're doing. Right. Um, and to not do that is, a, I think, not only a disservice to us and the, the rest of the community, but to themselves. Uh, you know, if you want to know, come and ask. And then if you don't like what you hear, you can go on about that or or so forth. But or, I think or, having the conversation is Or they can doing. even go and start up another group that uh, has Absolutely. their own actions. Absolutely. And I think ultimately, uh, and one thing that I want to draw away from this, and it was something that uh, I was very inspired by with even the Tea Party movement when it first started up, people getting active. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've gone for years yeah, without, yeah. without action, without people getting involved. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's very frustrating. So uh, we got a couple of phone calls coming in, and I want to get to those at 217-629-7970. Again, that phone number, 217-629-7970. You're on 970 WMAY with Chris and Anthony from Occupy Springfield. You know what really irritates me about your list of man is that you want a constitutional amendment passed, or you just basically want the civil rights of people who own businesses taken away because they own a business, and you seem to have a problem with that. Uh, First of all, thank you for your call. And let me tell you, uh, first off, the list of demands, New York has one, Chicago has one, maybe some other groups do. Uh, Those are not official, for one. They're ideas. Um, 
we're always coming up with ideas to try to do what we can to maybe uh, fix some of what's going on. Um, I also want to say, though, we are not against small business. Uh, we're not against profit. or not, as a group, anti-capitalist in any way. Uh, we would just like to see a fair shot. Uh, I had a uh, one of our members, Benny, talking to some kids last night, and uh, somebody said, explain to the kids why you guys are out here. He said, uh, well, imagine if you had a pizza with 12 slices, and one person says, I'm going to take 11 slices, and I'm going to keep those, and you guys can have this one slice of pizza and split it up amongst yourselves. And that's how the financial system is working in America right now, and that is not acceptable. 217-629-7970 is the phone number. I do want to talk more about uh, future actions that Occupy Springfield has planned, in particular this uh, notion of going to the city council meetings, which is yeah. very important, something I've been encouraging people to do for quite sure. some time. But first, a phone call. You're on 970 WMAY. Uh, the question I got for your, your guest, and, and I appreciate him coming out, but I always wondered, your corporation bad, government good, yet... All the stuff that you're complaining about, if we didn't have corrupt politicians such as Barack Obama and Dick Durbin, who are majorly corrupt and taking mm -hmm. huge amounts of corporate money, and I don't hear you complaining about government. Mm -hmm. All right, that, that response to that. Yeah, so, um, so you know, you, the, the Occupy movement, it's a unique situation, and uh, different political party members can finally agree uh, fully and honestly. Uh, but they have to get over their rhetorical principles. So as an example, uh, Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman has said that uh, Congress must protect the taxpayers instead of handing out favors to Wall Street. Uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said we cannot allow endless taxpayer-funded bailouts for Wall Street banks. Ron Paul said Wa Wall Street has the strings of Washington and they pull and do what they want, and that's where the corruption is. Uh, President Obama uh, truly believes that Wall Street is only acceptable when there are clear rules and basic safeguards that prevent abuse and they check the excess. So, you know, the politicians actually all agree on this one thing, that corporations uh, do not represent the views of the people. They can't, uh, because corporations have the fiduciary responsibility, uh, as to put into Terry Duffy's words, to protect their shareholders and their shareholders alone. And ultimately, if they can get a bigger price, a higher price for a product from you, they will. Yeah, I mean, it's about the bottom line for, and I don't know if people have seen, what's that movie called? Uh, I think it's called Corporation. Where the it talks corporation. about the corporation, corporation yeah, yeah. how it pretty much breaks it down and says that a corporation's a sociopathic, uh, narcissistic yeah. Yeah, that entity. entity. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go seek that documentary out. Uh, you'll be amazed at the psychology behind the corporation. 217 629 7970 is the phone number. We'll get to all your phone calls as they come in. You're on 970 WMAY with Chris and Anthony from Occupy, Wall, uh, from Occupy Springfield. Well, cool. Glad you guys are out there doing it. I'm Thank just, you. I'm curious, though. I mean, you've got all this energy, but it doesn't mean anything unless it translates into action. Right. So uh, we've got corruption right here in Springfield in that state capital that mm -hmm. you guys are on. Yeah. We've got the legislators are the second highest paid in the nation. They've mm -hmm. got the biggest pension of them all. Mm -hmm. But I don't hear anything. You could have 50, 60, 70-year-olds out there if you came out and said, we need reform right here in Illinois, and leave Wall Street and Chicago alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, let's go ahead and target that now, because off the air we were talking about action. Right. And one of the things you guys have coming up is you're encouraging members of Occupy Springfield and the community in, at, at large to start showing up to the uh, Springfield City Hall meetings. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, and, you know, I think that every every system, if it goes unchecked, has has can have a tendency or an opportunity to to uh, do whatever they want. Uh, I personally have gone to city council meetings in the past, quite a few of them, and I'm really surprised how many empty chairs there are. Uh, if it's a lot not, of times it's about 70% empty. Yeah, yeah. And but at the same time, I'll read letters to the editor. They're very passionate. Yeah. And I wonder if they only had gone and said that to the people making the decision before the decision was made. Because a lot of them, you know, a lot of these letters to the editor, they're well-written. They have very good thought put into them. But it's always after the fact. But it's fact. always after the fact. And, um, you know, you go to the council meeting where the decision's made, and you have 10 people deciding the fate of whatever issues on the table with absolutely no input. And they're really just best guessing it at, at best. They're making their best guess. Or 
since no one's here and no one's going to say anything, I'm going to do what I want, and yeah. that's how it's going to come out. Well, I'd also like to say to the caller who says we haven't accomplished anything, um, we may not have as of yet, but let me tell you the the action we had last Wednesday at the Capitol took that vote from that day. It was scheduled for that. That was the, the day they were going to do it. They bumped it up, and they keep flip-flopping between the 21st and 29th now. They've also given us an opportunity to speak before the committee. Mm-hmm. You know, that sort of direct action is what leads to change. Now, maybe we haven't won the hearts and minds of the legislator yet, but we're being given an opportunity to do so, which is, uh, you know, I think for a group of people who you assume are just on the street with signs is a definite positive move in the right direction. And what? these uh, the Senate committee hearings are open to the public as well. Yeah, they And are. there again, you can go, we're going to go and test the final And that's panel. the thing, too. I mean, the, the, the Congress, the legislatures, the, the Illinois General Assembly, the Springfield City Hall, they are accessible. I mean, if you look at yeah. it, lobbyists do get first contact, essentially. That's sure. because they know the schedules. Mm-hmm. They know the game. Right. We need to get the electorate to know the schedules, to know the game. Yeah. We almost need, and I, I, I've almost dubbed myself a citizen lobbyist, because yeah. we need to be able to, to get into those offices, right. not on one issue basis, on everything. We need to be able to get into those offices, have those conversations with the lawmakers, tell them where the Occupy movement stands, where the Campaign for Liberty movement stands, where uh, the Tea Party movement stands. You know, it, it's almost – we keep getting more and more uh, marginalized and, and separating ourselves, but if we come together in a multitude, oh, yeah. there's no stopping it. Of course, that room's going to be empty as long as we're outside fighting each other. Right. And that's no, actually exactly. the point yeah. of yeah. the uh, – And that's what they want. That's the point, yeah. Divide and conquer. Yeah. And it's yeah. a very uh, wealthy, strategic uh, <laughs> uh, way to, to, to really dilute the, the message. So – uh, and I hope that that doesn't happen with Occupy Springfield. We got a couple of calls coming in. We'll get to all of them. Two one seven six two nine seven nine seventy. Not go through. Will you please try right. your call again? No, you won't try that call again. Uh, we get creditors calling up here. We get <laughs> banks calling up here. Uh, it's ridiculous. You're on nine seventy WMAY. What's your question? Uh, two things. Number one, don't concentrate just on city hall. Spend some time down at the county building. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot of yeah, a lot of, for sure. a lot of a lot of things go on there. But since the Republicans have like a twenty four to Five or 25 to the majority, the yeah. press seems to ignore the place. Well, and I'll tell you what, I, I report on the county building, and when they have their monthly meetings, they go by lightning fast. They do. And people, Number- people rarely even have a chance to speak or even know what's going on because they have their little caucuses beforehand. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for example, the county board finance chairman is against letting the citizens vote on whether they want to raise taxes for police. Now, I think it'll probably fail, but why not let the voters decide? Yeah. My second issue would be, uh, I don't think it's, people are asking you guys to do things. I don't think it's time yet. We still need to get people mobilized and out. And, well, was, we need to get people educated, too. Right. Yeah. I was walking in the first uh, parade, and somewhere behind me I heard snippets of somebody talking about Chicago in 1968, and in front of me were two people with Ron Paul signs. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we need to get the, the, the masses mobilized more sufficiently before we talk about, you know, going off our separate ways and doing things. And, and you're right. It's it's a, it's a training thing. What we don't want to do, uh, well, let me say two things. One is the best way to lose a game is to not have a player in the game. But at the same time, we don't want to send someone in and, and look undereducated. Look, and frankly, a lot of citizens have never, ever done this before. Um, it's very intimidating, too. It is. Too. It is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that actually is the point of what it is that we're doing. We're, we're actually educating the, the consumer or the citizen, and we're getting them comfortable with the process. And at the same time, in these, in these general assemblies that we talk about uh, at the Occupy meetings, is that we're, we're basically practicing. It's kind of like a scrimmage. You know, we have to come up with a decision about do we want the balloons to be the balloons to be pink or blue or et cetera, whatever decision comes up has to be a consensus vote. And believe it or not, there's a lot of, of it's very healthy to have these discussions because it's, it's practice. And, you know, you can you, forming a consensus is actually quite hard uh, and, and leads into why Congress is doing nothing. Uh, it's because the system is made so that when we disagree, the system stops. Mm. So we actually have to have something that works for the greater good of the greatest number of people in order to move forward. That's the best part and the worst part of our democracy. And as long as we aren't educated on how to to play the game, then we'll not ever play it. 
217-629-7970 is the phone number. Chris and Anthony from Occupy Springfield in the studio. We got full phone lines. You're on 970 WMAY. Hi, are you there? We are. Okay, I have a question for you. You guys are talking about um, corporate lobbyists being bad. Yes. Well, okay. or, or at least having uh, exclusive access. Yeah, right. right. Okay, well, all right. What about this? The VFW has lobbies, the NRA sure. has lobbies, sure. unions have lobbies, oh, MAD right. has lobbies, mm -hmm. all the environmental good. groups have lobbies. Who decides who's the good lobby and who's the bad lobby? I think the decision is, um, number one, Citizens United uh, versus the campaign board was that corporations are people, and now they get to say and spend their money as people. Uh, the IRS decided the corporations are people. That's what that's based on. Well, the, the idea, I think, is we're not against lobbying as a whole. We're against the ability of corporations and lobbyists to feed money to our politicians. Or a select group to wait control. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. Mm -hmm. You just went against yourself. So you're you're against if you have a if you have a lobbyist, you know that's basically saying that we have someone who's trained to ad, you know address that particular issue. What what the Occupy movement and this is a worldwide thing is that corporations shouldn't be the only ones and lobbyists shouldn't be the only ones to have the influence. Part of the problem though that we've we've addressed earlier is that the citizenry just chooses not to involve themselves either. And that kind of makes it a little bit worse. So it's not to say that, you know, we want to eliminate uh, lobbyists that make sure that our that our airlines are safe or lobbyists that want to make sure that our uh, utility rates are low. But uh, we don't want corporations to be the only ones that have a say-so in the game. A great example would be Senate Bill 397, where Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, the leader of that group, Terry Duffy, his, his pension is $9 million. He's saying, and he has lobbyists in there saying that we want to take the pensions from teachers and firefighters and police workers, postal workers, et cetera. And if, unless other people get involved in this process, then the people with the most money are going to win. And that's just not how our democracy was set up originally. And uh, the fact is, it's, it's been co-opted uh, to an extent. So you're right in that all lobbyists are not bad, and we're not saying that. So I, I, I don't want you to think that, that that's our angle. We're just saying that, you know, this game is actually for everyone, and we should all be a part of the discussion. And, sir, I'll give it you is. just one more moment to, to rebut, and then we got another call. Okay, it is for everyone. I'm a, I'm a state worker. I'm forced to belong to a union. Mm -hmm. Our union is is dumping all kind of money into lobbyists to, to fight that pension mm -hmm. thing and all that other stuff. So, I mean, um, everybody is involved if they belong to a, a special interest group. I mean, I, I belong to the VFW and the American Legion for the same reason. Sure, Everybody but, is involved. So a homeless person doesn't have a special interest group, and someone who's hungry and starving on the street doesn't have a special interest group. And other than people who will volunteer their time to go and be activists for, say, the Salvation Army or the Red Cross, et cetera, they're not going to be able to afford to compete with the Mercantile Exchange. Well, not to mention you also have people who work for, let's say, certain large retailers, and the lobbyists that they have that work for their company actually work against their efforts or against the the employee, not for that employee. One last call before the break. You're on 970 WMAY with Chris and Anthony from Occupy Springfield. Hey, I actually have, I actually have two things. First of all, since money gets you access to politicians, and politicians are the ones that control campaign reform, how in the world is it we're going to ever be able to be able to get politicians to be limited on the funds that they get so we can create less access uh, based on money? That's a great question. Uh, it's, it's been argued for a very long time, and we're, I know we're not going to solve it tonight, but um, one of the things that uh, would be helpful would be to reinstate the Glass-Siegel Act and readdress campaign finance reform. However, I also want to say something uh, I've kind of been saying along is that you, ha you do have the right to go and be there and say your piece, and so many people on the regular level are not doing that, that we're letting them really control the debate. Uh. That's more than just headlines. All right, welcome back. We've got less than a minute left. 
Anthony, Chris, thanks again for coming in tonight. We'll make this happen again next week, possibly, yeah. for uh, two hours instead of just one. Uh, what's coming up uh, in the next week for Occupy Springfield? All right, we'll be attending the uh, the uh, State Senate Committee hearing on uh, Senate Bill 397. That's going to be Wednesday at 1 o'clock in the State Capitol. And we're also going to have a rally at the State Capitol on the 29th of November at 3 p.m. Uh, that's when they'll be voting on that measure. And um, we also have General Assemblies twice a week and on weekends. And a couple, uh, you can always check our webpage for current updates if anything were to change or things coming up in the near future. And that's Occupy Springfield, um, what is it? Occupy Springfield IL. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Occupy right. Springfield dot <laughs> Occupy Springfield IL dot org. All right, that's all we got for this, uh, this weekend. And like I said, We've got to do it again, um, uh, maybe two hours next week, Look and maybe two hours the following week. I mean, this is Love an it. ongoing thing, so uh, it's all about debate, and it's all about conversation and communication and education. So we'll uh, see you next week back here for a, a complete live edition of Saturday Session. I can't wait. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> complete four hours. It's WMAY Springfield. We'll see you next weekend. Thank Thanks.